So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I like to scour the internet for, you know, theories and claims, no matter how old or absurd they are. I like to look into what people believe and what science tells us. It's how my fact or fiction series started. So I found an article on a website that made an extremely bold claim for clickbait. So my name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you all about Petralona Man and how, according to this particular website, it challenges the out of Africa theory. So back in 1959, a skull was discovered in a cave in Petralona, Greece. The skull has been dubbed Petralona Man or Archanthropus Petralona, and it has been scientifically dated to be between 240,000 and 160,000 years old. So while I was searching online for information about this skull, I stumbled upon a website, Newstangale24.com, who had written an article about this skull. So, you know, me being me, I decided to make a video about it, as I love a good article that makes extremely bold claims on research topics. I am like this. I don't know why. So the article starts off by saying that the human skull has been dated back to 700,000 years ago, and that researchers have been pondering the question of where exactly the skull came from. According to the article, the skull is considered to be the oldest human europeoid, meaning that it has European traits. So this article makes it sound like this skull is a Homo sapiens skull dating back to 700,000 years ago, and therefore it completely shatters the out of Africa theory. Which is an absolute preposterous claim that's based on nothing substantial, as the skull has been researched, and none of what they claim here is the actual case. The article explains how Dr. Aris Polianos was tasked to conduct research on the skull and cave, the Petralona cave. Dr. Polianos studied anthropology in Moscow in the late 50s and early 60s earning his PhD in 1961 with a dissertation on the origins of the Greeks. So since the 1970s, Dr. Polianos investigated the cave and its early hominin remains, and ever since he's mostly become known for his controversial claims about the age of these remains. So according to Dr. Polianos, the Petralona skull is about 700,000 years old, and that this makes the skull the oldest human, europeoid, unearthed in Europe. So according to his research, the skull did not originate in Africa, but evolved independently in Europe. Later on, Dr. Polianos discovered a calcified tibia that was found in Triglia, Chalkidiki, in Greece, which he claimed belonged to a Homo erectus, which he dated to 11 million years ago. That's a bold claim. An extremely bold claim. He said that the tibia belonged to a new subspecies, Homo erectus triliensis, and according to him, this species spread all over the world from the region of the Aegean Sea around 13 million years ago. Which seems highly unlikely, let's be honest. So the article then goes on to say that more scientists have looked at the Petralona skull and said that it's from a different kind of ancient human than Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and modern humans like us when it comes to its anatomy. But somehow that it has traits of all these three species and strong European traits as well. The article, however, never really explains who these scientists are, but apparently they do confirm the age at 700,000 years old, and that it's at least part Homo sapiens, if not completely Homo sapiens, and that it goes against the out of Africa theory on how humans and their ancestors evolved. Even though Dr. Puliano said that it has traits of Homo sapiens, but it's not a Homo sapiens. So, of course, me being me, I went to look for more evidence on the research on the Petralona skull. Not that there is much evidence for me to, you know, sift through at this point. The Wikipedia page seems to offer the most information about this skull, actually. 
So yay, Wikipedia. However, I did find a couple of articles that talk about the big cover-up of this skull, its age, and the implication that it challenges the out-of-Africa theory. I'll link them in the description down below. So, me being me, I went to scholar.google.com to try and find some more information, and I did manage to get my hands on a paper looking into the morphological similarities between the Petralona skull and, you know, other skulls from the same age group, you know, dating back to the same time frame in Europe and Africa. So after sifting through the paper and, you know, reaching my own conclusion, the conclusion of the paper was that the morphologies of the Petralona skull, the Sima Los Huesos skull, and the Cabue skull in Africa were indeed similar, although the Cabue skull was mostly similar to the Neanderthals in its morphology. Again, the Cabue skull being from Africa, and the Sima Los Huesos and Petralona skull being from Europe. The preliminary findings were that the middle Pleistocene fossil humans uh, from Europe and Africa should be sampled as a single taxon, ancestral to both Neanderthals and modern humans, and it doesn't place the European specimens within the Neanderthal species. As of this point in time, it's believed that the last common ancestor of the Neanderthals and us modern humans is Homo heidelbergensis. Therefore, it is actually believed that the Petralona skull belongs to a Homo heidelbergensis individual. I have created a video on Homo heidelbergensis in the past, I'll put that as a card in the upper right corner, and if I don't forget, I'll put it in as a link in the description down below. The close morphological similarities between the European and the African species points to close contact during the Middle Pleistocene, which later on diverged in their evolutionary paths because they lived in different climates and everything. That happens. The European fossils show that it led to the Neanderthals in Europe, and the African fossils show us that it led to Homo sapiens, you know, us modern humans, as the fossils from Jebel Irut seem to come from this line. As Greece and the Balkans are situated at the crossroads of Africa, Europe, and the Near East, and, you know, has been the gateway, historically speaking, into the continent of Europe. So this geographic position makes the fossil record from this area ideal to test the hypothesis about the timing and the nature of population contact. And it's ideal to test the course of Neanderthal and modern human evolution in Europe. So Greek Paleolithic paleoanthropology remains largely unexplored and should be researched more, as more excavations are needed in this area in hopes to uncover more fossils to clarify the questions we still have up until this day. So at this point in time, no early modern human specimen are known in this area, but that doesn't mean that they aren't there. It means that because there hasn't been much focus in the area, they are most likely not yet found. So the Petralona skull shows the importance of this area when it comes to a deeper understanding of Greek and European prehistory. But it is important that we look at the facts, not at what we would like to believe. The article that I found makes extremely bold claims that haven't been scientifically proven, but has written them in a way that makes it seem like fact. I personally think that it's very important to stop the spread of misinformation in clickbait articles. We need to do our due diligence and research subjects in a scientific manner to provide the factually researched and known information, as real history is much more interesting than a simple clickbaity article. So what do you think about the Petralona skull? And what do you think about the area of Greece and the Balkans that might hold many clues when it comes to our ancient evolutionary past? Let me know in the comments down below. With that said, you have reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the links in the description down below to go to my playlists or click a video in the end card. 
I cater to you. You can find videos everywhere. Um, I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. It means the world to me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.